Oh, wow. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, man. It's like 5 in the morning. Oh, wow. Oh, Lord Jesus. Mm. I had been going through some things. And I'm like, I've been sad. I'm not going to tell you. I've been, I've been sad. I've been depressed. You know, depressed. <laughs> and, um. I mean, just accepting, just swallowing a lot of the racial issues and, and just uh, just dealing with life. I'm like, you know, life the way it is, is handed to you. And it's been, a, it's just been, a, it's been too much to bear. You know what I'm saying? It's just been too much to bear. And uh, I got all that in my mind when the pastor was talking about people being bought and people, to, people being bought to hang around people. You know, he's talking about in the Bible. And I'm like, oh, Ezra, you talking about in Ezra and stuff like that. And people smiling in your face and you think they're good, but they really no good. So I'm, all that's been, you know, <laughs> it got me hype. I'm kind of paranoid. And um, dealing with this job situations and, and all this type of thing, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, my stomach had been in knots. And, um, you know, but just... Um, I can't go everywhere, you know what I'm saying, and do everything everybody can do. And um, a real quick note so I don't divert from what I'm really trying to say is that, thank God, this morning when I awakened, uh, you know, um, God was saying, do not be conformed by this world. You know, Romans, I think it was 12 too, and because uh, I get daily verses on my phone. So I thank God he confirmed that because, you know, so a lot of times I feel out of place. I'm not above or beneath anybody. It's just a lot of times I, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I pass places and bars and stuff and people sitting out there. It looks, it looks, it looks, it looks like they're having a great time. They're drinking and, 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 and you know, smiling and all this type of thing. So, you know, I pass all of that because I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't mind if they had some blues somewhere. I'll sit and listen, you know, uh, some nice little jazz or something like that. But other than that, mm -mm. Uh, I'm going to try to speak more plainly because I noticed on some of my videos, I talk real fast and uh, some of my words is difficult to make out. Hey, <laughs> I might need a translator. So with that being said, uh, like I said, I was just feeling just totally just, ugh. I'm talking about exhausted. Mentally and physically. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, it seemed like every time, well, it don't seem like every time I get paid, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep up, but it's like I'm going backwards. I, I got to pay this bill, and then this bill got to be paid out. Then here comes somebody in telling me that I still owe them. You know, then they turn around still, I got to pay this, the car insurance, all this stuff is due. So then I'm like looking at my money like, darn, you know, what happened? So anyway, you know, make good feel. So thank God I went somewhere and I found me like a, a, a family pair of shoes. I did that. that. That was nice. Not doing shoes to make me feel better, but it's like just a little thing. It's some little stuff I do. So make sure that I don't need nothing like that. Because whatever I get, I, it has to last me. So, you know, it's budgeted. But it's like, okay, here. I, I, I'm i done right there. So that being said, so I did that. So then I'm riding around and I'm trying to think, you know, I don't want to sit in this house. Because every time I look at the house, I'm thinking about the chick next door with all that racism stuff. You know, she's throwing stuff in the yard, witches and all this type of thing. It, participating in the Halloween real deep. So, I'm like, I don't want to sit in the house. I had been babysitting my grandbaby. I should have made a video earlier, but like I said, I wasn't in the mood for anything like that. So, I had him, and that little boy is getting to be a little terrible. Him and his little words. He got a couple of little cuss words that he want to say. And, um... <laughs> no, nah, he didn't get them from me. I don't, he got them from his Aunt Shay. But uh, other than that, uh, he kept me busy. He did not take a nap. So I had taken him to his grandfather on his daddy's side. And his, dad, his grandfather cut his hair and he hadn't seen him. So that was a beautiful moment, you know. He fed him some candy, you know what I'm saying. And, and even though he hadn't been or Hezekiah hadn't been around him, it was a spiritual moment because he knew him. Even though he didn't hadn't been around him, he knew him. 
You know, and that's why I said blood is thicker than water. And he needs the kids need to be around all they family, everybody related to them. You know, uh, squash whatever stupid when it comes to your kids like that. Let the kids be around the kids. Let them see each other. Let them see their grandparents anyway. So I did that today. You know what I'm saying? You know, and I talked to him as well as I talked to uh, uh, Hezekiah's father. You know what I'm saying? Trying to tell them, you know, get things straight. You know, try to, uh, try, let's mend the fences, not just it, between us. I'm talking about men, just squash out everything that's dissing your child from being in your parents' life. You know what I'm saying? Just get stuff together. You know, stop going to court. Stop doing stuff, man. Chill on all that stuff. Going to jail ain't pretty. Stop it. So, anyway, all of that being said. So, my daughter finally came and picked him up. So, supposed to have been here at 5 o'clock. Got her six something. Yeah, with a little self. And so she picked him up. And uh, that little boy hadn't had a nap at all. I mean, he was hype. <laughs> you know. And um, so after she picked him up, that's when I'm looking around. You know, got my little shoes. Looking around for uh, what to do. You know, what to do. Knowing I got to pay a bill. But then it's uh, complicated because you got to pay the bill this way. And it's the last day of the bill. But I didn't get my check. Until today. So then now I got to figure out paying. And they don't went in the bank account. To, Hello. All of this is going on. So my stomach's kind of not. So I was like, okay, what can I do? So I had looked on up. I had seen that the film Marshall was coming out. It popped up on YouTube. And so I was like, all right. You know. So anyway, I'm like, okay. I was going to catch it at 7. I missed it. So then I seen it came on at 9.55. So I hung around, went to McDonald's, got me some little nuggets. So really, to be honest, so I could use the bathroom. Thank God I did buy something because they locked the door. They got an electronic thing to lock the door. <laughs> they got to push a button to open the door for you. So I sat for, I just sat, sat there, looked at my phone, tried to organize stuff on my phone. Just sat in the parking lot, you know, after I left McDonald's. And then finally it was time to go in. So... Uh, which I had already purchased my ticket from the counter. So I go in and I was like, nobody's there. Nobody's in the theater for Marshall. You know, a couple of more people, they sitting there waiting for their film. So I get in, I sit down. Oh my God, those seats, I did, oh my God, they all that. You know what I'm saying? You sit back, push a button and the, the legs kick out and all this type of thing. So I got my popcorn, which I wasn't supposed to have. Popcorn with extra, extra butter and me a little Coke. So I'm sitting there. I'm the only one in the theater. Didn't nobody take my ticket. Wasn't nobody at the door. So I'm like, wow, this is weird. So I'm sitting there. All of a sudden, uh, this black chick I know, her and her friend, uh, to be honest with you, uh, you know, they they came up. And I know her from, from, uh, 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 from, uh, uh, from, uh, a meeting I attended. And uh, so they. Oh, excuse me. She spoke to me and everything. And, and you know, we like, oh, yeah, I remember you. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So they was going to sit in front, her and her friends. So then they decided not to. They sat back there by me. So we sat in there. We don't stretch our legs out. And she steady saying, oh, we're going to be the only ones in here. She said, she said that because she figured it was just because it was a black movie. And I, uh, uh, Third Good Marshall is what I went to see. I recommend, I'm not going to say go to the theater. I paid $10. I was in, informed by those two that I could have gotten a discount. But uh, anyway, $10, you know. You know, so if you got it, do it. If not, when it comes out on uh, the DVD, <laughs> you know, get it. Please watch it. But anyway, so we sat in there and we figured we, I was the only one. I'm sitting, it's like, what, how many seats is it? 200, 300 seats in the theater. So, like I said, I'm not prejudiced. Three white people come in, a chick or something else, I don't know. So they came in, a chick, a guy, something. I didn't pay them no attention. I just watched the one on my side. They come in and sat like two seats over from me. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, what was this about? So then a guy, white guy, sets up in front with a cap on. I already know what he is. He's security to make sure that you don't sit there and try to film the film. I'm I'm already hip to that. 
you know. You know what I'm saying? You know we got man. I know how to man my P's and Q's. You feel me? I know how to watch my area. So I knew what he was with the cap out. He trying to see if you're going to pull out a cam. These over here, I couldn't figure out what they was about. Plus, I'm like, all the seats here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, oh my God, the seats. I went to uh, Baxter Theater on Boystown Road. I love that theater. I had been for a while. Last time I was at that theater, I went to see... Uh, 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 I went with that nut, that ex friend, and we went to see uh, Birth of a Nation, and I cried in that one. But with this one, I thought it was gonna be that way, but it wasn't. It had a twist to it. But anyway, so I'm sitting there. They came in, so I'm like, then somebody, a couple sec, two seats behind us, a guy, some that phone going off. He's talking and everything in the theater, you know, because when I, it, when I'm listening, I want to listen. I cut, I paid my money. <laughs> I paid my money. I want to listen. So, you know what I'm saying, watch what I'm watching, whatever. So, anyway, so I'm trying to figure out what they're about. So, they kick their seats up like our seats, you know. So, I'm like, okay, I ain't paying attention. Because me, I was ready to get up and move. Not because they white. It's because, hey, I'm trying to listen. You doing all this fidgeting. And I heard the candy moving and all that. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm like, I don't even know what your, what's your motives. So, then I was ready to move. But I was like, okay, guys, was like, sit still. You know what I'm saying? You're not in the theater by yourself. So, you know what I'm saying? Because I went out by myself. So, it was cool. So, I sat there. So, anyway, the movie started off real slow. I'm not going to tell you what happened in the movie. But it started off real slow. And it was one of his cases. But I thought it was going to be the case about the school. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't. It's a different case. And it blew my mind the case it was. And had turned out. But, um. Yeah, please go see it. But after I left her, I felt good. I felt really good. It was nice to go out, you know, by myself. You know what I'm saying? You uh, know, sometimes uh, uh, T.D. Jakes used to say it too. He said, if you by yourself, you take yourself out. Learn how to be with yourself. You know, and a lot of past I said, learn how, you got to learn how to be by yourself. You know, and I, I'm learning. But that was nice, you know. I used to do it, but it was nice. But it was hard because all the time at first, it's like, should I do this? Can I get the popcorn? Should I get the popcorn? Can I buy this? Can I buy that? Should I get the ticket? I'm in my head. I'm adding up every every everything I'm spending, and because that could go here, that could go there, and it's sad to live like that when you don't have no type of pleasure. You owe people, but then it's like you scared to pay something. But then it's like if you dead, nobody's gonna get anything anyway. So. Anyway, like I said, when, when it was over, it was fine. So anyway, I was laying here, and um, uh, I'm going to tell you this before I go on. Uh, the other night, what has been on my mind is um, I had a vision like, and not a vision like, I had a, I don't know, just something jumped in my head because I don't want to take it be over anybody's head what I'm saying but anyway uh under anybody's head anyway I had a vision I dreamed of a crest uh it's like a Roman shield and it had a uh it had a cross on it so I don't know what that what that means I know what I looked it up I know what it means so anyway put it together figured it out but yeah if anybody else knows some things share it <laughs> but um uh, seen that, I seen some other things, some changes, but, anyway, so, I was laying here, came in, you know what I'm saying, it's fine, like that, you know, night, toned down, laying here, so, something woke me up, so I wake up, oh, excuse me, so I wake up, I get on Facebook, when I get on Facebook, I'm strolling through, I heard a beautiful sound. Uh, it was out my daughter's, uh, my daughter posted it, my baby girl posted it, talk about what if I was, uh, you know, what if I was sick, you know what I'm saying, there's two couples getting married, his name is Brian something, but he's talking about, you know, if he got sick, or she gets, you know, basically if they got sick or hurt, would you still be there for me, it's a powerful sound, nice marriage sound, beautiful marriage sound, you know, wedding sound, but, um, it was nice. So I listen to that, so I scroll on through, you know, looking for something exciting. I'm scrolling on through. I joined the prayer warriors. I'm scrolling on through. I'm on my mom. This is on my mama's page. So, 
so uh now I'm I'm scrolling on my mother's page, yeah. And um uh, so anyway I get down to the bottom and it's uh talking about uh uh my cousin in law, uh Brenda. She posted this about uh some uh, discrimination at a restaurant and uh T.I. and uh, his uh, wife, Tiny, all of them out there. Some people wasn't allowed in some Houston restaurant, a restaurant called Houston or something. And so they out there protesting about it. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. Wow, you know what I'm saying? And she just lit a fire me because I was sad. Like I said, I was down for the count because I've been feeling bad because I've been speaking out. A lot of people are no longer on my page, on my page. Because I had a lot of people from all different type of countries on my page. So evidently since I've been speaking out, they got off my page. Which I'm straight with that. You know, but there's no longer people out there. So then, you know, you question like, should I have said that? Did I say the right thing? So that had been bothering. So when she did this, she lit a fire in me. So like I said, the discrimination. So they out there protesting in front of the restaurant. Who what jumps out of the car? Two white women jump out of the car, and one white lady with gray hair, she going to holler out, uh, go Trump. And I'm like, did y'all see that? You know what I called her. And I'm like, all these times, until you stand up for something, as long as you don't stand up for something, a lot of people are your friend. I'm not just talking about white people. A lot of people. Because you don't know where your enemy is. It's just like TDJ said. You want to know who your friend is and who's for you and who's against you? He said, go share with a bunch of people that you think is your friend. Share with them something good that happened to you and then watch their face. If they happy and smile and out and y'all be like, ooh, congratulations. That's your friend. Nine out of ten times. But if they making a face or looking and, why, oh, how did that happen to you? It didn't happen to me. How did you do it? Why Why you get that I didn't get yeah, that's the one you been watch. That's the one you better watch. That's not your friend. So yeah, you know, like I said, people sit back and sugarcoat stuff, and everybody want Holocaust, Trumps in there, racism coming out. It's not that. It's just time. People don't understand it's a season and it's a time for things. You know, when it, when when the spirit is moving, you have to move with the spirit. You can't sit back talking about I'm gonna catch it later on. When it's moving, you better move with it. That's God speaking. He's revealing stuff to you. You have to open your eyes and see what he's revealing. And that's what it is. It's been there all along. It was laying dormant. You know, like I said, a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on Trump, but it's been there. It's been there. People try to use Trump as an excuse, but it, it, all that ain't, that's not falling on him. That was there. You was racist to begin with. You didn't just all of a sudden cause Trump jump in there. Well, especially when she stood there hollering, go Trump. And another thing about Tiny and all of them at the restaurant. And I think 106 and Park was there. You know, pick it up. It's all over Facebook where they're protesting. And like the guy was saying, we need to get out. When, the, when there's a problem for one or two people, whatever, we need to all get together and go out and protest against it. But also, what... I'm quite sure, he, like the guy said, they patronize the business and they give them a lot of money. But my thing is this, you should have protest right there and then when you hungry, start going to black restaurants, start going to black businesses and give them your business. And the same thing with the black business. When the black business is not opening or doing what it should be doing, get in they butt. Get in they butt and make them bring themselves up to power. Make them do what they should be doing as a business owner. But frequent them instead of running around giving your money to somebody that don't care about you. And this is the hit about it to me. In the while they were talking, a lady came out and she said, I can't, I drove all the way so many blocks down here to let you know I was treated that way. They did me like that. Uh the whole situation was a group of people, I think they're one one oh and six one oh six in parks, however it is, they group. They told them they couldn't seat seven people. So one of them said, well, we'll break up. Take three over there and four over here. They still came back and said they couldn't do that. Then, apparently, from what I gathered at the end, is that somebody said that if they broke them up like that, set them at separate tables, they would be yelling back and forth. But my thing is for you to assume 
You know what they say when you assume. When you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. So, therefore, for them to assume, why did you assume that? You know, you broke up or uh, 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 said something about three people was broke up. So, I don't know. It don't really seem like discrimination. No, just because he, uh, they said they couldn't set you uh, at separate tables. They didn't have tables for four and they didn't have tables for three to separate you. So, okay, I'm cool with that with them. But I like what the black dude said. He asked the owner or the manager of the restaurant, which was a white guy. I guess he was white. He looked like he had something in him. But he asked him point blank. He said, why is it that we can't set a separate table? What is the problem? He asked him over and over. And the dude just kept stuttering. The manager, what the owner, whatever, he just kept stuttering. He couldn't get him. He said, so evidently it's discrimination because you see that these people you didn't do up. That's the whole hit. Speak. You have an opportunity to just say what's on your mind. You know, if it was something different, well, now nah, we can't seat you for whatever. We don't want to seat you like that because, you know what I'm saying, it's it's our policy to seat three or take whatever. He didn't come with none of that unless he didn't know. But, I mean, but my thing is this, too. Why would you eat me? Why would you eat in a place that you know don't want you there? First of all, yeah, okay, you didn't want me here. Even if they would have turned around, if I don't, if I've already argued and disagreed with you, I'm not eating out of your kitchen because I know you nasty. People are nasty. People do all kind of stuff to your food. And my thing is this: if they're, if they have been discriminated against black people for a minute, can you imagine what they've been doing to your food? That's the point I'm making. You know, that's why I said, like I said in my other video, watch where you eat. I had some Popeye chicken the other day. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing that. Watch where you eat. Watch what people feeding you. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's a lot of stuff. If you look at some of the Indian restaurants, uh, a lot of the restaurants owned by Muslims and different people, if you look at the reality of it, they're not located out through St. Matthews. They just now starting to pick up. They got one in Indiana. But they're not accepted in a lot of places. They mainly function in the black neighborhood. Those are realities that a lot of people need to look at. Black people need to look at it. I suggest you look at it. Look at it. Look at the businesses that are owned by others other than black people that are in the neighborhoods that's feeding you food, that's feeding you fried chicken, that's feeding you ribs and feeding you stuff. And here's the hit. They're feeding you ribs and pork and stuff like that that they don't even eat. And 9 out of 10 times it's against their religion. But you'll break your neck and eat that food. Why would you eat something somebody else didn't eat? Think about it. Back in, in, in slavery times, why do black people eat chilies? They said, mama said it was a part of the pig that the white people didn't want. They threw away. So you're eating stuff that somebody don't even want to eat. The same thing as slave. You eat scraps that nobody want to eat. So why would you eat something that somebody else does not eat? Think about that when you frequent different stores, especially stores that are not black owned. And like I said, when they, while they were out there protesting, they should start taking their business to black people. While they're out there protesting that place, I like that they're standing together. I like that T.I. and them speaking up because that's good. And while T.I. and all of them were showing up, T.I. started opening his mouth. <laughs> I got given, give given props. He didn't just stand there. He wasn't just visible. He was verbal. He was standing there. He said, uh, you eating in a restaurant that discriminates. And some of the people got out anyway. But this one person... They didn't, uh, 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 these two white guys, they took and, uh, uh, went and shook T.I.'s hand, and they went, uh, and, uh, and they didn't, they refused to go in. So, there is, it's, it's, um, it's power in numbers. That's the point I'm, I'm making. And the same thing I was talking to you about, about court, when somebody go to court, then we should all show up, especially if we feel that that person's been, uh, wrongly accused, we should show up. When you watch Thurgood Marshall, he's saying that. You know, what I said, not that, hey, I'm a visioner, but, hey, the truth is the truth. It's what I was saying, and as a matter of fact, it ended up being a picture. And I got a lot out of the picture. He said something, too, in the picture. Like I said, pay, pay attention to it, you know.
Pay attention to the picture. You know, it, 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 it's, 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 it's a good picture. You know what I'm saying? And I went out mainly just like I'm saying to you. I don't know who the directors are of the movie. I'm not sure about that. I got to look that up eventually. But the whole point was, if you're going to walk the talk, be about it. Don't talk about it. Be about it. I'm not going to tell you the frequent black things if I'm not doing it myself. And the main thing is, like I said, when I seen it, it just like, it's like, it just kept being visible. Marsha, Marsha, you know, and they had, you know, on YouTube, they'll keep playing. So I'm like, okay, guys must be saying, let me go. You feel me? So it was like, okay, let me go. And then I thought about it. Here's a black movie coming out. Y'all didn't hit it. Y'all didn't hear me. A black movie coming out. Wasn't nobody in the theater. It wasn't packed. Like I said, those few little white people, though, which they might have been the ones, too, that were sitting there trying to see if you're filming, you know, trying to play it off or something, you know, because uh, you were, you know, sitting there laughing at some parts of it, and, you know, some people was laughing at things, and, you know, I didn't really see funny. It was a couple of little things in there happened, but, like I said, I wasn't in laughing mode right there. It was a couple of things I might have smiled at, but on the, on the whole, now, it wasn't nothing really funny. You know, they tried to throw some little lines in there to break it down, which was nice. Because I didn't want to be in no sad and gloom, see no lynchings and all that type of thing. So, but other than that, you know, you know, I like, I, when I'm watching something like that, I like my little privacy. I like my private moments so I can focus on what they're saying. Because I paid my $10 and I can't re-watch re the movie, you know. So, I got to get everything I can out of it. You know, make sure you don't go to the bathroom or nothing. And that sucker ended up being, I think, like two hours. But like I said, it was worth it. It was worth it. But uh, like I said, though, what I loved about them standing outside again and protesting is that the same people that's protesting, that the, the people that's protesting now, that it's money. You got stars, T.I., because a lot of white people and different minorities, they listen to his music. They listen to her. It's all right to sit and bop your head. Oh, yeah. You know T.I. stuff. You know, I can't even think of his song. But, you know, uh, 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 you know T.I. stuff. He, he's good. He's a good rapper. I like T.I. And I like Tiny. You know, uh, 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 do you want to? Well, we don't want to sing that song. But anyway. <laughs> but a little Tiny, she's cold. I like her, though. You know, so I love the music. I'm, let me say that. I don't know her and I don't know T.I., but I like their music. I, I like their, their artistry. But here it is. Now that they protesting, you would think, since you like their music a little bit, you know, you watching their little reality shows, you would think some of them people be like, oh, wow, you know, uh, you know, if they saying that it's discrimination, oh, well, now nah, I don't want frequent to play. But you got a lot of people that's in there going because they ready to eat they don't give a damn about you talking about discrimination because it's about them getting their eat on but that's when what you really 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 about and how you really 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 think about black people shows up because i'm quite sure the white woman that turned around because you know i put in her account or something else i ain't ashamed of because they was trying to talk. They out there protesting. She going to walk up to them and, and voice her opinion, her and the other woman. So they told her, say, go on somewhere with that. So if yeah, she's walking away, she going to turn back and holler. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Go Trump. Yeah, you standing there hollering, go Trump. And I guarantee you, please watch the video and hear me. With everything coming at me, I pray to God, please watch the video. Watch the white woman. She's got great short hair. She's in front of the restaurant as they as they protest, and she's standing there, her and another white lady. It's two of them. They both got short, cropped hair. She put you in the man of Jamie Lee Curtis a little bit from the back, but she's old. Well, Jamie Lee Curtis is old now, but Jamie Lee Curtis' hair is kind of gray now, but her hair is gray. She got some sunglasses on. Please look at her and view her. Because I guarantee you, I bet you she works in the school system. I bet you she's a, a, a professor. She's somewhere where she's around some black people. And they're going to call her out when they see her. Believe it. Because she was caught up in the moment where she didn't think she was being videoed. And you watch her. Watch her get a backlash from it. Believe it. Watch it. I guarantee you. Because that's how God does. People don't realize that. 
God does that. The, all that little hat, I, I'm racist, and you had it in the closet. Mm-hmm. Like I said, when I say racist, this can be black people racist too. But when you had all that stuff, and you 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 holding it in, and you I don't, don't nobody know, and you smiling and cheesing in people's face, and you really hate them, and a moment like that occurs, and you that's when you you you, you know you gotta say something. You get in that moment, I say I gotta say something. Yeah, she got in that moment, she got had to say something. Because, like I said, she was ready to go in. They talking to her. She going to voice her opinion. And you how to go Trump. Watch. I guarantee you she's somewhere explaining. When I said that, I didn't mean it. I bet she works for the school system. I bet she's somewhere around. She works around a whole lot of black people. And they going to question her and say, Oh, Sandy, by the way, you usually sit at the table and smile and cheese with us. What was meant by uh, go Trump? What did you mean by that when the, uh, when the people were protesting the restaurant? Were you saying that you were for them? You know, uh, go people. You right, don't go to the restaurant. Or what, what did you mean by go Trump? Watch her start stuttering. Uh, 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 no, you know what I'm saying? It was the heat of the moment, but no, I didn't mean that. I was like, they said this and that to me. And so then I said go Trump because I thought, yeah, watch her try to explain. Watch how many black, <laughs> black so-called friends she lose. Yeah. And see, she knew she was dirty when she did it because she hurried up and turned around. She thought she was turning from the camera, but this is how stupid she is. They had the big cameras. They had professional news media cameras on them. You know, that's why, I t you know, that's what's eat that eats at my stomach is because it's, there's a movie, uh, there's a black movie. Uh, it's called Things Unsaid. And the title just is what gra grabbed me when I heard it. Uh, 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 if I'm not mistaken, it's the one where this black chick's married to her husband. And uh, they're both professional and, and, and uh, they start distancing themselves from each other because of their work and their lifestyle. And so she ends up getting into an affair with a man. And uh, with another man. Oh my God, he's fine. I'm quite sure it's the one movie. But anyway, she gets into a relationship with him. And, you know, and the whole point is, you know, uh, things unsaid. You know, when you, miscommunication. You need to communicate in a relationship. You need to communicate with people, period. But you need to communicate in a relationship with one another. Then things don't go crazy like it did. But I'm not going to tell you the end of the movie because I would like you to watch it. But the whole point of the title is Things Unsaid. And that's what it reminds me of with racism and with biases, you know, biases. Is that a lot of people that don't like you and don't care nothing about black people, they'll stand and smile in your face. They your friend at the PTA meeting. They your friend at the baseball, football game. They cheering your kids on, especially if your child... They think got potential to be a pro. Oh, yeah, come over. You can go over to their house, too, and eat at their home. All of that's fine. But let a situation arise where it's, you have to take sides, like in that situation. Something that offends their, how they think, feel, and believe. You better believe. Oh, yeah. Watch how quick it come out. Watch how quick it come out. They might not say the N-word to you real quick, but you better believe this going to come out how they feel. And how they feel is they don't give one eye older about you. And then you sit back looking stunned talking about, I didn't even know she felt that way. That's why you got question every relationship. When it's black on black and when it's white on white, question the people around you. That's why I love that the the thing about that movie. Like I said, it made a good point. Things unsaid, you know. Things unsaid, you know. But uh, like I said, I was down and feeling sad. But like I said, man, I'm so glad Brenda posted that because it real it reaffirmed in me what I'm fighting for. And like I said, is is which, like I said, it's difficult, especially when you feel like you by yourself. And a lot of time with me, I need people to feed me, and I don't have that, you know. Like, I go places, and I go try to get fed. Yeah, I get fed some, but at the same time, when I try to join in and participate, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't work. Like, I was sitting with this guy, a guy's chick, 
and uh uh they were talking about uh making doing a fundraiser or something like that to get some money so they could go out of town but here's the hit you, you, it's right. It's the month is what? This is uh, October. You're talking about something for next year. You want to do a fundraiser for next year. And you're going to waste my time standing there talking about it. I'm not going out of town with you then. No, no, never. Because I seen the motives that you got. Not only did I think that you had some bad motives, some people that are my friends already gave me heads up and was like, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. So, now, nah. so I don't mind. You know, and then, like I said, sometimes I used to be the person shy. Like I said, I thank God for changing and molding me. And usually I'm quiet. But like I said, I speak on other people's behalf real quick because it's in me. You know, it's a couple of white guys. And, and they got to take, you know, they take and travel a distance in the rain, cold, in the sleep. And uh, two people going to suggest, why don't they boo the meeting for, why would you, okay, yeah, that's fine for you. You drive. And you know, and this is the thing. I'm going to show you again. Man, she just, oh, ooh, thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. Which I call Michelle for real. But thank you. You know, she's a grandmama taking care of her grandbabies. I'm so proud of her. I be telling her all the time, you're a miracle, honey. You're a walking miracle, the things that you're doing. Taking care of some grandbabies at this time and stage in your life. Man, I, I my hat's off to you. You know what I'm saying? It make me tear up. I mean, you know, she's taking care of some kids. And she's doing a beautiful job of it. You know, that's why I try to tell them that's the people we need to support when grannies. You know what I'm saying? Grannies taking on their children's uh, uh, kids. You know what I'm saying? We need to commend them and help out. You know. But uh, anyway, I digress. <laughs> Let me get back on point. Uh, shoot, I threw myself totally off. Uh, what was I talking about, man? Uh, uh, oh yeah, I was talking about the trip. Yeah, you know, people told me about it. But anyway, the point I was making is, yeah, they talking about it's too hot in here. One person made the statement, it's too hot down here. And, you know, why don't we take it down there? Y'all talking about three or four more blocks. And the point I was making too, these people would have to walk in the rain, sleep, you know, three more extra blocks. They already walk it like five. And they're, a majority of them are white men. Why would you want to do that? You know what I'm saying? You Because you're thinking about yourself because you drive. You're not thinking about the people that have to walk. And what made my me so passionate? Why? Because God broke me down where I had to walk and catch the bus. And so by him doing that, that's what I'm saying. When some trials and tribulations do come in your life, look back on it. And that's why... James in the Bible was saying count of joy because I kept thinking like how you okay I'm not gonna say what you talking about yeah I agree that I broke my leg or I broke my arm I I couldn't pay my bills I was home I'm not gonna agree with that but now as life goes on I understand what James was talking about I understand the Bible I understand that's why I said I don't care what nobody say the Bible's true it's a whole lot whatever 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 because it was rewritten but. <laughs> Major true, I understand because if I had not been without my car, I would have said, "Yeah, let them in." Yeah, you know, I well, let me take that back. I wouldn't because I know some things about that area. You know what I'm saying? I know some things about that area. I didn't want to bring it up because you know what I'm saying. In that situation, it wasn't to be brought up at the time. But if we would have kept on talking, <laughs> I would have brought it up. But they want to do some things at a place, and <clears throat> the place is uh. It's not like they think it is. You know. It's not like they think. You know. Because everybody, just like the uh, pastor uh, Tim Finley said, you know, you got a lot of people talking good. And, and it seemed good. And they in the church. And they want to do some godly things. But everybody that want to do godly things is not godly. You know, I got a cousin named Ashanta, and she posted something that just made me cry. I mean, she blew everything out of water. She blew Christianity. She made it jump up and take a leap. She showed a video where a man was, uh, the preacher took, he was a new preacher, and he took and put on homeless clothes and made himself kind of smelly and went up in the church, in his own church, the church he was going to be preaching at as a homeless person. They treated that man like he was a, a walking disease. 
And then when he, uh, they said they introduced a new pastor and he started walking up there. And they looking like, why is homeless man walking up there and he's stinking and looking all funky and we didn't even want to sit by him. Why is he walking up to the, to the uh, pulpit? And turn around, he walked up and he started taking the mask out and he introduced himself. I'm talking about white people start crying. I'm talking about white people. I'm talking about white people start crying. The congregation was white. I, always, I didn't see nobody black, but they was white and they start crying. He was a white pastor and they start crying, feeling bad. Oh, oh, oh. That's exactly like I'm telling you that woman's going to feel. That's exactly why she's somewhere drinking her, her a man almost cuss, drinking her sorrow. Because she failed to realize what you do in a split of a moment, boo-boo, can affect you for a lifetime. Yeah, you want to sit back and be real nasty, howling, go Trump. Yeah, go Trump. Now you got to go home. And you're going to wake up the next day and all of that little comment you made is going to stand out. Because out of everything that was said and did in that video, that stood out the most to me. Mm. But anyway, like I said, I spoke up about that. Now nah, you got people, then they was like, oh, yeah. You know, everybody don't have a car. Your car might be down. My car might be down. And when my car was down, I couldn't get back and forth there. And I could have, but it would have been a little strain. So, yeah, you know. So, and it wasn't worth it, especially dealing with people that you don't know if you, how you going to function, if you open or not. So, yeah. But, uh. Thinking of others, thinking of others, and keeping others in mind. But, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not uh, against nobody. Believe that. You know, I'm for you if you for me. I'm, I'm for you sometime when you're not for me. It depends on the situation. But, like I said, the people I, I'm dealing with, you know, so far, it is not like that. But, like I said, other things, yeah. It's some hidden racism. And everybody want to play like all damn Trump's in there. And you want, nah, that ain't Trump in there. That was in you, boo-boo, before Trump got up in there. You know, that was definitely in you. You know, just bring it on out. Bring it on out. You know, why was you hiding it? That's what gets me. Why were you hiding your racism? Why do you hide your racism? A lot of people had were hiding it and had their racism because it's a money factor. I'm racist. I'm with the. Uh, I'm, I'm with uh, people. That I'm a, I, in a hate group. I, 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 but I'm a teacher, and I got to teach black students. I, I can't show it. You know, I, uh, I'm, I'm working in a restaurant. I'm work. I own a restaurant in a neighborhood where there's black people frequent here. It's about money. I can't show my racism. You know, those are the things. Like I said, we. It's where the ball is rolling. Everybody needs to stay on and keep participating because if you notice, it's the we got the people that don't want to stand for the flag. We got the people doing this. If you look at in the, you know, like I said, I don't like our, I don't believe in all these history books because you know what I'm saying. I don't believe in the people that have written them. So we need some more black people to write them. Start having kids pick up books that uh, depict black people in a positive manner and have more black people in it than it does white people and white people's stories. We need to start picking up books like that. When I homeschool my child, I taught my child black history. She knew about Sojourner Truth. I taught her that. She got that in her now. You know, she got a lot in her now, but I taught her that. You know, that should be a part of your curriculum. Hello. Anyway, like I said, uh, eyes wide open. You know, eyes wide open, you know. Like T.D. Jake said, he said, you know, and I just reheard, you know, I heard it again. He talking about, are your eyes open, but they shut. You know, and that's the way I was. That's why I had to apologize because there was things I didn't see because we, I've just been sugarcoating it. You know what I'm saying? Well, these, and they're nice to me. Well, you know, other than that, I'm fine. You know, but now when you know it, when your eyes is open, now, you know, I, with me, I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, I'm walking in the store. Who's following me? You know, which I was aware of that. But you know what I'm saying? Not to the capacity. That it's, oh, I, I used to take and justify it. Okay, maybe it's the way I'm dressed. I'm doing looking a kind of bummy. So, yeah, I can't look like a thief. You know, but my eyes are so open today. When we was at the barber shop, we left out. And I took my grandson to go get him some chips and stuff to calm his little butt down. 
And so he took it. He wanted to take his. He demanded that he take his car with him. So he had his little car. We walking through the store. And uh, so we arrived to the counter. You know, and there's a white chick there. And at first I wasn't going to say nothing. But just, just in me, it came up. Uh, he brought that car. We brought that car in. And she was like, oh, I know. I seen it. You know, I mean, now I'm on the defense. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of like paranoid now. And that's not a good feeling. And I can imagine, you know what I'm saying, how it was for black people then. I mean, like I said, look at the movie. They took it. They did it. They did it. They did it. They did a good job with the movie. I like it. It was slow when it started off. It started off real slow. But... You know, and they threw some little things in there to make you kind of question it. But all in all, you know, it was a good representation of Thurgood Marshall, you know. And his works, I mean, the things that, man, I didn't know the NAACP was was that powerful then, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, I'm talking about kick butt, kick butt. Yeah, they, they, oh man, he did an excellent job as an attorney. I'm talking about an excellent job. He carried his, man, I ain't even gonna give y'all of it, but he's a bad brother. That's why I tell kids, kids, my grandbabies don't do it, but I always used to try to encourage them. And really, I always had a lot of kids. I always had a lot of kids. And not just my grandbabies. If I see a child, I always put into different children. But I love to give kids books. I love kids to have books. I love kids to read. Read. It opens your door. The door of your mind to so many places. So many fantasies. So many realities. So many visions. You know what I'm saying? Pick up children Bibles. I have my kids. You know, I have books here for my kids. Some little bitty books. You know, a little collection. I found at the Goodwill. But, you know, I had children Bible. I like things like children coloring books. I had a lot of those. All Bible coloring books. But, you know, to try to keep Christ on their minds. But, you know, like I said, sometimes I hate talking and telling people do this, do that when it's not happening in my children's life. I wish my children would go to church. I wish my grandbabies were in a church. But at the same time, they they see too, so much reality, especially on TV and social media. Of uh, preachers doing it, touching the kids, preachers going with the women, and my children have seen you know they seen reality. So you know a lot of people see reality. You know you put you want to send your children to Sunday school class, then you come to find out the Sunday school teacher's been molesting your kid. Uh, the Sunday school teacher was racist and was saying some things to your kids inappropriate. You know so. You know, uh, it's sad to admit, yeah, that's why a lot of people in my family, you know, they they, they churched, <laughs> they churched out, <laughs> what you say, you know, what Kirk Franklin say, uh, uh, take me to the king, you know, I'm all churched out, you know, and it's sad when you get that way where you don't even want to go to church, you don't want to worship God in public because there's controversy. You know, and that's like when I went to church the other day, it was, it's sad, you know, I've seen this before and a lot of people didn't see it, but I was at church and, you know, the pastor, they called a the pastor there and the pastor started preaching about telling the congregation, he's a visiting pastor and he's telling the congregation how to act, you know, and why they, you know, how they should work together and stuff. And I know as a matter of fact, the pastor came to a church that I was used to be a member of, and he spoke on behalf of my pastor then. He came down there to correct their ways. <laughs> but my thing is this. That's all good. That's nice. But I don't feel that you need to do that. You know, especially if you can't get voted out. If you're in a church and you can get voted out of being a pastor, which is the church I was at the first time when this pastor came down there. Yeah, I could see you speaking up because you want to secure that person's job and you believe in that person. But other than that, if you're in a secure position where somebody can't fire you, the congregation can't fire you, I wouldn't even worry about it. The main thing what I see with that is kind of like a weakness because you need to demand. 
respects. Demand respect. And to get that respect is to pray. And that's what I said. To get that respect, let's pray. To get that order, that unity. Because when, when you got a congregation and everybody's doing what they want to do, how they want to do it, they don't have no respect for the pastor. With that being said, people are going to be people. Sometimes even though people are church people, the world gets in them. That's why I'm glad for that verse today. I believe, like I said, it's Romans 12 too. Be not ye conformed of this world, but be renewing of the mind. And uh, cause I had to look at look at that like renewing the man. What is it being? You know. So I'm looking at all of that. But yeah, taking on the world ways. But we in. But but here's the hit. I feel sorry for the congregation, not the pastor, for the fact that seven days a week, people got to live in in the world. And when you living in the world, a lot of times you are gonna become the world. Sometimes you have to participate in the world. You know what I'm saying? And then church is less than you are participating in the world. And I'm saying that also to say this. That's when you say, say have these meetings where you sit down. That's when you start inviting God in. Now, I don't need you to come and talk to me and tell me nothing. It's nice that you do it. I'm proud of you. Thank you. That's a beautiful thing to come and tell them. Y'all messing up. Get in order. Now. You don't need no pastor to come and tell you nothing. Ain't no pastor hiding God. You need to invite God in, but you need to help them in. Because all the congregation is not like that. It's sometimes it's a few that want to run things. When everything's out of order, who can bring things back in order? God brings it back in order. You need to call on God and ask God for order. But when you're calling on God, you need to do it as one. Church membership, church people should be as one. We need to be on the same page. That needs to be addressed. I don't need nobody else to come and tell you. Let me tell you this. Y'all doing this. I've seen a pastor. pastor that, as a matter of fact, the pastor that was down there, because I'm not going to call him out, but the pastor that was down there correcting people and they had corrected people at other church, he called out some people in his congregation in front of everybody, and I was a visitor. And he said it well. He said, no, no, no. Usually I don't do this. He said, but now, what was that? You know, I can't remember if the band, I think somebody at the band or something they did do. But he called, he said, usually I wouldn't say nothing. He said, but now nah, I got to say something. Now, nah, what was that? And I was like, oh, wow. And I don't, you know, I don't know. That's how he do it. And evidently it was addressed and it was fixed. But that's what needs to be done. You call on God, let God bring it on. Because what I see is that when you have disorder, God's probably moving somebody. He's moving somebody away. Again, the person I heard it from is being said, but the person I heard it from is TDJ. If somebody want to leave, and I heard it from Medea. If somebody want to leave your life, somebody want to leave your church, I left the church before. Believe me, I left the church. I leave churches all the time, and then I'll pop back, but I'll leave. You know what I'm saying? Go do me. Somebody do something to me, hurt me in the church. I, I have left and went to another church and everything. And then came back. I was, as a matter of fact, I left a church with Jordan, another church, and came back. But so, but like I said, I don't even know if I'm a member of the church or not. It really don't matter. You know what I'm saying? I just go where I get fed. But like I said, though, you let God sort it out. You know, pray about it. Get them to come together. Make that pray and fast. That's one thing I can't say about uh, Bob Rogers. You know, I'm going to have to get off here because I heard clicking sounds in my video probably running out. But Bob Rogers, he used to do a lot of praying and fasting uh, back in the age, what was it, 90s and stuff like that. When they used to give out big old uh, turkeys and everything at uh, the, Lord's, uh, uh, the Lord's Kitchen over near M Street. But he used to do a lot of pray, praying and fasting. And that's what churches need to do when you have problems and disorder in the church come together. And uh, pray about it. And seek God's face. Don't seek man's face. Seek God's face. You don't need no pastor to come in there and do no talking for you. You stand up there and you tell them what they should do and how they should do it. And if they have a problem with it, you tell them, start telling them, you need to go to God about it. Then after you go to God and you feel that you really sincerely have an answer from God, then you come and talk to me. Other than that, okay, let's keep it moving. Keep it moving, you know. 
Because like I said, a lot of disorder in the church sometimes can stem from gossip. Believe me. I don't know. It's just in my spirit. A lot of times it's gossip. It's, it's you know, mm, Lord, mm, should I say it? Uh, I, I'm at 55 and I don't want to mess this video up because it'll cut off and it probably mess up. But I'm going to say this real quick. I was at the church and I was invited to the little meet. It was mostly women in there. <laughs> Hello. And uh, all of a sudden we talking about God. We reading that the book is fine for a minute. The next thing I know, they got to bashing the deacons. They got to bashing the pastor. And one thing that was said then, pastor talking about I got to make an appointment to see him. I ain't got to make no appointment to see him. I'm a, And I my, I just tuned straight out when she, before she finished. And I was like, it's time to go. It's time to go. Also in that when it was brought to, to my attention is that uh, I can share too much. I, I'm talking too much about me because I asked a question and I wanted it to be explained to me, but evidently that's not possible. But could it be that you didn't have the answer for me? So that's why I don't like running to attend all these little uh, sister groups sometimes and participating in a, 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 a lot of these little women meeting things. Don't get me wrong, there are some good ones, but like I said, that one particular one that I had attended, now, because like I said, I had attended a master life class, and it was wonderful. We had ladies in there, and we all talked. And what I loved about our class, I, I be new beginners class, and our master life class, I went through all four new members and all, through all, my, all four of my classes. What I loved about them is all of us grew, and we all voiced our opinion. And we had a devil among us that started strife, talking about what we was learning out of the book. You know, it was wrong. We shouldn't be listening to that book because it was being taught by some white people. Believe me, all that. And white people have written the book. But that's what was being said. But hello, here's the hit. She wasn't a member of the church, but she was taking Master Life class. She was a member of another church, but she was there taking the Master Life class. You know, so, uh, you know, if you listen to some of my videos, I talked about it. How we end up, she, it was, uh, you know, we was told not to gossip. But. End up finding out, me and the teacher of the class, we start talking. We was talking, and in the conversation, her name was brought up, and we end up sharing and conversing with one another and found out she had did him too, trying to discourage him about what, what he was teaching. So, like I said, it's not gossip. I tell my kids, I tell, it's not gossip when you take it and being informed, because <laughs> I call it informed. Inform me. If somebody's getting ready to pull out a gun, don't be talking about, I think he got a gun. I don't know. But then, you know what I'm saying? It look like it. It probably is a gun in the bed because I've seen the hand on it. No, nah, that's not gossip. That's being informed. So, yeah, I like to be informed. And like I said, though, usually when there's discord in a church or in any type of a group, it's someone from the outside that's bringing something in. Uh, it's something that has stemmed from gossip. That's what separates people and pulls people from the church and pulls people from God. The tongue. God tells us, watch that tongue. Believe me, I've been guilty of it. That's why lots of times I'm like, okay, let me be careful about what I'm saying. Let me pray about it. Sometimes I just spew out what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking. But if I'm incorrect in anything, God will come back and he'll correct me. And that's what I'm saying to pastors when they're having problems in the church. If they're not in a situation where they can be voted out. Because I've, I've heard of that numerous times. You know, I've seen that big fight on there. And that's what people, my kids and people see. Those people in church that's fighting. Because somebody came in, a person built the church up. Did everything for the church. Then all of a sudden, because they have board members, they come in and vote them out of the church. Which they voted and pushed them out. And the police had to come and everything for this one church. But then by God's grace and mercy, the the man kept praying. The, all the people, his wife and everybody, they put out of the church. They the people that had built the church and set the church up. So some the board members came in for something, for some discretion. It wasn't no big, big thing, I don't think. Whatever it was, they put them out. But by God's grace and mercy, the man said, he said, our pastor said, I kept on praying. God moved them people back in the church and moved him back into position. I don't know if he was in fully all position, but he moved. They moved that man back in. It was a big man, real big man, big preacher. 
Yeah, and they had put him out, but that man prayed, turned it over to God, and God opened the door and brought him back in. Because the devil's going to show up. He's going to show up, and he's going to act out. You know, and who does he come through? He comes through the people, the congregation, because he wants to hurt the pastor, the shepherd, or the church. When you know, I'm learning. You know when you're doing a good job, and you're helping somebody, and you're feeding, when you get all of that. That's why James, again, sometimes pastors got to remember, count it out joy when they getting uh, disorganized and, and they verbally abusing you and turning on you. Let them go. Let them go so somebody else can come in. Let God correct them. Don't you try to do it. Let God, don't get no pastor to try to do it. Let God correct them. Let him handle them. You know, it's like I said with her next door. I didn't put it in my hands. I could have took that up a long time ago. Especially if I had <laughs> my Billy D. Williams juice. Yeah, it would have been nipped in the bud the first day. But it is what it is. You don't put your hands on nobody. You handle things in a civil manner. And that's what I did. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how. Ah, right, time to go. I got her up and upload.